guys, welcome back to Beast Quest with the next awesome, exciting special, Yakarix the Ice Bear. So, just finished reading this one. We're now on special number 16, I do believe, but just to double check my notes, I will do that. And we are on yep, number 16. So, 16. We're doing good so far. Um, but like always, guys, in depth story analysis and then my overall thoughts on this epic adventure, so you haven't already. Make sure you've read this book before watching this review, unless you guys don't really care for reading the book in the first place. But I'm not sure what you'll be here for. Anyway, though, that being said, though, let's get through to the analysis portion. Tom and friends were huddled up inside a, in, huddled up inside as a powerful winter had spread over the kingdom. And after some time passed, a couple a couple told them of a beast causing destruction to the land. So our heroes, despite the scary weather, were ready to face it. I should also mention our heroes assumed this was no natural winter, but one of our one of, one of their enemies who was probably behind this. Anyway, while while some some questioned maybe the couple just saw Nanook, well, Tom tried to contact Nanook with a new method by combining the red jewel with Nanook's bell, and Tom could see that Nanook saw Nanook saw it. It, it's probably most likely this ability uh, would work for the other five shield tokens, by the way. And, but anyway, Tom could see through Nanook's eye, basically. Anyway, Tom saw, not Nanook was get, Tom saw that Nanook was getting beaten by a mysterious beast, which led, to King and, which led to the king and queen tell the story of a legendary bear beast called Yakarix, um, who could cause endless winters until she was defeated by... Until she was defeated and... Defeated long ago, and she was perished in a volcano. But it looked like the ice bear had found a way to return, so our heroes were given flame cloaks to protect themselves from the cold, as well as Epos, who came to give them a ride to help Nanook. But after some after some travelling and um, with beast flight, Epos uh, fainted at, in flight mode and began to fall. Tom and Eleanor managed to wake up Epos, but it was too late. They crashed. Only Epos was injured. Tom wanted to save her. Uh, wanted to save. Uh, wanted to save her. So, uh, combining his flame cloak with the healing talent, she was revived. You know, one wonders why Epos doesn't just regenerate her new bot. Regenerate into a new body. After all, she's a phoenix. But yeah, we need Tom to be cool. So yeah. Anyway, Tom was reminded how important wearing the cloaks was. How important wearing the cloaks was, and the hard way because he got felt very cold when he took his cloak off. And they said their, their goodbye to Epos, further pacing on, they found the air freshener. Further pacing on, they found Nanook, who appeared, defeat, who appeared defeated. When Tom attempted to revive, revive her, she told, she told her to look out, uh, to look out as goblin-like creatures in ice armor approached. So, forgot, as soon as you save one, Tom is attacked by something else. Tom and Eleanor fought off the creatures, but it was revealed they weren't just wearing ice armor, but the creatures were made of ice. After taking out a few of the goblins, uh, they retreated, and Tom finished healing Nanook, who was who then escorted them to a, a skirt, who escorted them further north, where they encountered an ice palace. Inside, they finally met Yakarix, who was charging right at them. Yakarix went for Nanook probably because she knew she could have she could have a better chance at beating her, and she believed she was the weak the weakest out of the three of them, due to the fact that she's had a previous battle with him, and she probably doesn't know she's been healed. Anyway, our heroes tried to help get, tried to help get, you know, find, you know, try to help out, but easily get swatted away. After some battling, Eleanor was out cold, so Tom tried to. Tom attempted to rescue Nanook, but he, but despite Tom's victory, it wasn't long enough. It wasn't long before the Acarix sent Nanook over the lip of a chasm. Um, this set Tom into payback mode, and he easily overpowered Yakarix, forcing her into a retreat. Tom was about to go after her, but when he saw how cold Eleanor was, then it was revealed that Nanook was alive. So she's not basically last chapter they thought she was dead, but she's alive now because she survived the chasm fall. This battle wasn't over yet. They had to find another way after Yakarix, but then the ice marauders returned. Those little gremlin guys. Tom and Eleanor fought off the marauders long enough to make an escape and quickly outran the ice goblins long enough to continue on their quest. To continue to find further entry through the ice palace, 
but they came across Kenzo once again, and this time she was confident in her plan. Man, the specials really do enjoy using Kenzo a lot, and her whole revenge on a bounty ploy, don't they? Because, like, how many times in a row we had Kenzo? Hmm, quite a few, I'd say, maybe three or four. Uh, Kenza claimed this time she would win and she summoned a tornado, referencing the Wizard of Oz. Speaking of references, we have three from Narnia, a witch, a nice palace, and an endless winter. Anyway, our heroes dodged the twister and then Kenza's marauders came back to, so our heroes once again kicked some butt until they were forced to flee where they came across a crevice. By the way, at this point, you know, I'll, I'll discuss this later. Uh, but Tom and Eleanor weren't done yet as Tom used the full power of the golden armor to jump with Eleanor across the crevice, escaping the Ken escaping Kent's ice goons. Further pacing led them back into the ice palace where they hoped to find Kensa and get her to stop all this, but instead they encountered a encountered a boulder. Our heroes made a run for just barely avoiding the boulder. However, however in the flee Tom lost his shield. Eleanor gave her her cloak to Tom to help get the shield back. Tom tried to be quick because Eleanor's life was on the line. However, while trying to reclaim the shield, um, he he faced Kensa once again. Tom got Tom got his butt kicked by Kensa. Eleanor, despite being so cold, still tried to help her friend, but but like Tom, but like Tom, she lost. Then then tight then they tried again and they still lost. Tom got mad and managed to fend off Kensa, but then Yakarix returned, and before Tom could help Eleanor. The beast gr grabbed him while the witch made her escape. Tom was ready to. Tom was ready, and the fight scuffled all the way down a corridor to the main throne room. I should also mention Tom managed to give El Eleanor her cloak back. However, she was still so cold and could barely move. As for Tom, he got his butt kicked even more when Kensa, well, while Kensa taunting about her victory. Tom tried his best, but it seemed all was lost. However, seeing Eleanor keep crawling despite the cold made Tom get inner strength to fight back. However, this backfired, and it came down it came down to trying to reason with Yakarix. She explained Kensa had promised her the areas of which she wanted, she the areas of which she wanted, as she hate and also she hated Nanook for taking over the, her domain since her passing the first death she had. Tom explained Kensa was just using her and she can't be trusted, but Yakarix just shrugged it off and turned her attention to the and turned her attention to the weakened Eleanor. Also, I should have mentioned Kensa has this talisman, which is how she is unaffected by um, the endless winter cold. Tom stopped Yakarix from reaching Eleanor. Kensa tried to interfere, which gave our heroes an idea as Eleanor sneakily got a surprise kick on Kensa. Now with her inner strength fully restored. The witch lost her talisman and Eleanor tossed it to Tom, destroying it, causing the ice palace to melt around them. Tom taunted Yakarix to, to face him. Yakarix, despite losing her field advantage, still tried to fight. However, she ended up getting double teamed by our heroes, which caused her to be buried under the melting chunks of the ice palace. So she's dead. When they bumped into Kensa, she explained she had sent the remainder of her troops to finish off Nanook, but luckily our heroes helped Nanook out. No, our, our heroes helped Nanook finish off the goons. And as for Kensa, she was forced to make another retreat, but our heroes would be ready the next time Kensa made her move on a party or again. Um, so yeah, that is essentially the analysis portion of um, of uh, Yakarix. A few scuffles here and there, nothing too major, but that's uh, overall it's a pretty good story. It never really um, bored me at all. I mean, I thought Yakarix was going to be a big drag. Because the last time we got a bear beast, it didn't turn out so good. But Yakarix is kind of interesting because she she has this ability to create an endless winter, and the only way to stop the endless winter is with a specific relic, which a specific relic that has to be destroyed in order to stop the winter. So it's not like be defeating the beast beats the winter; it's more like defeating this power jewel defeats the winter. But I feel like when we get to a battle of the beasts, we may have to change it so that when Yakarix is dead the winter is gone that's probably the best thing we'll do but that's in battle of the beasts um anyway though with this yakarix the story and, it, and it's this one is a fun read i would say if you're looking for a book to further develop the relationship with tom and eleanor this is a good one to go for that's essentially what this book is it further develops our heroes facing up against a different type of threat and i would say this is probably kent's 
best plan. I mean, she had several plans before, but just like Sampeo, I think one of his best plans is in the specials. Which Sampeo is his Skolos, and probably Yakarox is Kenta's best plan so far, anyway, in case something changes my mind. Again, with Kenta, I really hope they cut down on her, because they're kind of using her quite a bit in the specials recently, so guys, cut it down with Kenta, please. Uh, but yeah, let's go over the characters and my overall thoughts on this epic adventure, which I do, again, I do think it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, Tom uh, is the main character of this book, I would say. Yeah, I would say it's more of a Tom book. If I were to say 50-50, uh, yeah. Uh, Tom book or Elena book? I mean, I know I'll say both. This is a, this is a dual partnership book. Because most of the books feel like they're either about Tom or on the rare occasion Elena. But for this one, I'll say 50-50. It's about both of them and that's a good thing. They're both trying to help each other progress through the story. They both help each other in ways even when they're not expecting it. Where Tom's like, oh, he feels like he's going to be his butt kicked. But seeing Eleanor's strength to go on despite all the cold and all that gives him the strength to carry on fighting Yakarix despite how many times he gets knocked down. Discount Chumba Wumba. Um, but yeah, he still gets knocked down but he gets back up again, keep fighting. So it's just amazing. The inner strength of these two, their connection, their bond, and just to keep fighting Yakarix despite the odds is really impressive and it, that puts it high on the list for me again i'm not going to say where i rank it but it will be there when i get to uh, ranking these books um but yeah so tom he gets a lot to do he gets to um he finds new methods to uh combine his his tokens which is pretty cool both with the bell and the red jewel and then later with apples's talon and um the cloak i believe he gets and there's the air freshener once again um uh, but like I said, uh, Tom does get a fair bit to do. When he encounters Kenta, he's ticked off, he's ready to fight her. When he encounters Yakarix, he's, he feels defeated, he feels questioned. But, you know, he every time he sees Eleanor, he sees, he gets smarter and wiser, and he rethinks his decision-making there. So, it does show character development for Tom, and that helps uh, pry him forward. Tom does make sacrifices for Eleanor by, like, giving her, giving up, wait, like, no, that was the other way around. Um, but yeah, Tom still does make sacrifices for Eleanor. He leaves her alone, despite the fact, just to save her life. But yeah, going on to Eleanor, I think I've said enough about Tom. Uh, Eleanor, um, anyway, just to wrap on Tom, because I don't want to rush on there. But yeah, Tom, he does get a lot of good stuff to do in this book that makes him relate to the character. As for Eleanor, she does maybe a bit more than Tom. Because I, really, I do want to discuss Eleanor a bit further than Tom. She makes a lot of good sacrifices. Sacrifices her own cloak to give to Tom just so she can get the shield back. Because she, I feel like she knows her place in this. She knows that she's not... I feel like she doesn't tell Tom this. But I feel like she knows that he's the one who is the destined to defeat all these beasts. But she doesn't want to get the credit for it. It's like, you're the master of the beast. I'm just the lackey or something. This is your destiny, Tom. Like, not that she's putting herself down, but she's trying to treat, treat Tom, like, without saying it. I, that's how I feel of the characters. Like, you never say, it's like, you never say certain things to a certain person because you want to further develop them. That's how I see it anyway. And that's what makes, um, Eleanor an interesting, uh, character. Like, you don't, you don't hear her say it, but you can... You can sort of tell that's where she's coming from based on her actions in the book. And that's what makes her very fascinating. So, and it's also nice to see that Eleanor, despite the odds, yeah, she, you see her crawl and still going on forward. And she, it is nice that she managed, she's the one who helps Tom get the jewel off um, Kensa to destroy it and stop the winter thing. Because without the winter, Yekrox is kind of just nothing much, really. But she's an idiot, so we'll get to that in a bit. El, uh, El, uh, Kensa uh, is once again the main villain, of course. Again, uh, this is probably her best plan, turning the whole of Avanti into an, a freezing winter, and the longer the winter goes on, the more species will die off. Only uh, uh, Yakarix is immune to it because it's, it's her... Yakarix is immune to it because it's her winter. Basically, she... Kensa is the one who released the beast, and Yakarix causes the pain this winter, and the only way to stop said winter is via the is with this magic artifact and by destroying it that's what we got anyway so it is interesting that this is a, probably the closest cancer got to winning as the Akrox could easily swatted the, the heroes down easy peasy most of their encounters and then it stood no chance Epos got thrashed most of the 
everyone was forced to hiding from the cold. Kenta would probably have won this. I'm surprised. I'm like, how did Sampeo's ship survive during this outbreak? That's my question. But despite that little nitpick at the end, uh, Kenta was, this clo was so close to winning. So this is probably one of her better plans, if not her best, with Yaka Rix. Um, so it is interesting there. But she does get cocky, and that helps her go down to her downfalls there, so there's that for you. Moving on to Yakarix, Yakarix herself, the big ice polar bear beast. She's kind of a brute, but because she's, like Kensa, she's overconfident in her abilities. She's in a, she, in, in a way, you could say Yakarix is like the beastly version of Kensa. Like, she's just, she's overconfident in herself. And the fact that these two have kind of a similar motivation where they both hate Avanti for being banished in a way, or defeated, or something like that. So there's that symbolism there. So that's just another element to add on why it's one of Kensa's better plans. And of course Kensa makes a promise to this beast where like, you do, if you um, take out these heroes for me and help me secure Avanti, I'll promise you the certain areas that you wanted. Because the only reason Yakarix is evil, well, Yakarix, I personally, I, well, she was actually evil, thinking about it, she just wanted to, she wanted to lay down her territory. When she died, Nanook took over that territory, because a new, I, 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 uh, a new ice beast was needed. And then Yakarix feels kind of jelly, or angry about that, and she hates Nanook, and that's why we, she tears her apart for the book. Um, so, you can see that there. Um, it just gives us a, it kind of gives a nice rivalry, I suppose, even though the rivalry didn't go anywhere with Nanook. It would have been nice to see Nanook finally get some payback, but, mm, what are you gonna do? So, as it stands, though, Yakarix, she's just a brute. She just had a bit of a personality, but not, not too one to, uh, get her point across, but... And when she makes, she makes a stupid choice despite her... She doesn't want to lose. Even the fact that she's lost her ice advantage, her, her like... Her advantage where she has her enemies weakened by the ice attack. She still thinks she wants to win. But when and she still tries to fight. She gets beaten. While Kensa on the other hand makes a retreat. So in that way. The one thing that makes Yakarix different to Kensa. Is that Yakarix is still willing to fight. Despite the fact her plan has failed. Or she doesn't have the advantage anymore. While Kensa on the other hand does retreat. So there is a bit of a nice dynamic with that. With the villain angle there. Anyway, guys, that's it for all I've got to say on Yakarix the Ice Bear. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Smash the like button, subscribe, that good stuff. Hit the notification bell right below the below. So stay tuned for all these quest related topics on my channel and other videos that are on there as well. I've announced the upcoming Q&A, so if you haven't already, make sure to put your questions in for the upcoming Q&A coming on July 26th. But that'll be all from me for Q&A 1800. Of course, that, that video I'm referring to. But that'll be it for me. Next video will be on Beast Quest will be Tempera the, the Time Stealer, so stay tuned for that one. Um, and of course, more LEGO customs may come in later today, we'll see. But that'll be it for me, guys. I'll see you guys for more videos coming your way. Till next time, like always, peace.